Oh man, it's Monday. I, I'm so tired, I just wanna sleep. Come on, Riley, you can do it! Lucky? Is that you? You betcha! Do the tech news! Well, I don't know, I, I don't feel very good. Do I, the f***ing tech news! Jeez, man! Not as friendly as he looks. Your eyes weren't deceiving you on the WAN show on Friday, NVIDIA's Titan RTX is indeed a thing, as the new graphics card has been officially announced by NVIDIA. The newest entrant in the enthusiast Titan lineup will boast 72 Turing RT and 4,608 CUDA cores, a slight bump over the 2080 Ti, as well as 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 video RAM. It can be yours for 2,500 US dollars, and if that sounds like a lot of money, well, it is, but it might be a good deal for folks who need top tier performance for video editing and animation, as it's very similar spec wise to the professional grade Quadro RTX 6000. 6000! But over 50% cheaper. Of course, it is over twice as expensive as the 2080 Ti, so don't expect them to sell like hotcakes to gamers. Though maybe you could cook a hotcake on this thing if you take off the heatsink, because it's so hot. Its uh, nickname is the T Rex. The T Rex? Yeah. What? Doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense at all. It's a RT, RTX. The RT Rex. RT Rex. I get it. If you're trying to decide whether to go with AMD or Intel for your new rig, you might want to wait a few months if you can help it, as a new leak appears to reveal that AMD is going to be launching its third generation of Ryzen processors at Computex 2019, scheduled to take place in Taipei at the end of May. A Taiwanese gaming site posted slides that are reportedly from a Gigabyte event, indicating that AMD will launch a new chip plus the X570 chipset, which will include PCI Express 4.0 support. It also doesn't look like AMD will be introducing a new socket anytime soon though, as the slides show that they'll be sticking with AM4. The processors themselves, codenamed Matisse, will be the first AMD chips on the consumer side to use the new Zen 2 cores. There aren't any details yet on pricing or availability, but if the wait is too long for you, just try and Zen out with one of those little sand garden thingies. There's been a lot of buzz about 5G, and we may finally be able to buy the first 5G smartphones before too long. It looks like Verizon will be teaming up with Samsung to release a 5G phone in the United States sometime in the first half of 2019. Although the specs of the new phone aren't clear at this time, it will be powered by a new Snapdragon processor, and the 5G capabilities mean that speeds could range from 10 to 100 times faster than what LTE can currently deliver. Although the new Samsung device isn't the first one that will reportedly support 5G, it does look like this is the first announced device that will have 5G built in, as Motorola announced an add-on module for its Moto Z3 that would enable 5G connectivity, because, because hey, maybe attaching those decorative trinkets to your phone can make a comeback. I never did that. Gross. I was too cool for that. Gross. Gro uh, you know what? I'm what, people saying, can't attach trinkets to their phone? Day. Colton, what's the problem? <laughs> Man, now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Private Internet Access VPN. PIA, that stands for Private Internet Access. Oh, really? Supports a variety of VPN protocols and types of encryption and authentication, allowing you to dial in the exact level of privacy protection you need. They've got apps for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, and Google Chrome, with support for several other platforms coming soon. You can connect up to five devices at the same time, and other features include DNS leak protection, IPv6 leak protection, and an internet kill switch, which will block all traffic if the VPN becomes disconnected unexpectedly. Check it out today at the link in the video description. It's me, Quick Bits! Oh, Quick Bits? What's up? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Japanese satellite cable provider NHK is now broadcasting 8K video with 22.2 channel surround sound. They actually got Warner Brothers to rescan the original negatives from 2001 A Space Odyssey for their first 8K movie, and are hoping to show the 2020 Tokyo Olympics in 8K as well, which is good news for folks who are hankering for ultra high res ribbon twirling. Dude, I can't wait until like 4K is like bottom barrel, bottom tier. And bottom of the like, barrel? Yeah. Just the standard. 4K, that's for poor people. Although Samsung's foldable display smartphone was only recently unveiled, Sony's already hoping to one-up them as they've patented a phone with a foldable transparent screen. It looks to be part of their Xperia line, and while it still needs an opaque bezel at the bottom, the transparent screen could enable better AR experiences, somehow. Which is good, as I need to be convinced the Pokemon I catch around my neighborhood are really there. But how will it help AR if the screen has, still has to go through the device? It's this clear... <laughs> you have to go. 
I don't know. I'm not thinking about it. It looks like Apple's AirPods are going to go fully wireless pretty soon as an updated model with wireless charging support is expected to show up in the first quarter of next year. They might also support Bluetooth 5.0 offering better range and though there isn't any news on pricing, I expect that losing one in a couch cushion could be a costly mistake. Microsoft looks to be planning a major update for its Windows 10 icons after unveiling new icons for Office last week. It's unclear exactly when users can expect to see changes, but some icons currently used by the OS have been around for more than 10 years. So Microsoft feels like it's time for a new look or a new update team, because why are we talking about icons right now? Fix your frickin' OS, Microsoft. That was a bit of Linus. That was a bit of Linus uh, getting that mad. Was, that was a little I usually bit of don't get mad. Yeah, well, yeah. that's a good reason to get mad. No, thank you. And Valve is going to be changing the way it handles revenue sharing on Steam with game developers. Rather than taking their usual 30% cut, Valve will be taking less if sales clear $10 million. Valve is said to be trying to attract big time developers back to the platform as a number of high profile games like Fortnite have done very well without being listed on Steam. I thought it was gonna go another way. I thought it was gonna be that they take less cut if it's like, you, you need some help, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's like, no, if yeah. you're making a ton of money, We'll take- Here's some more. Yeah. 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 You're okay with that? I'm, uh, you know what, take, take all the money you want, whatever. Wow. That's the news for today, so come back Wednesday for more, as we hope to keep taking a seven minute cut out of your day. Thanks, everyone! You didn't do any work. That's not- Shut up! Oh, Wait. jeez. Hey, that was me. Lucky's like so rude. Wait, was that you? Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Colton! Oh! <laughs> oh!